So it's Monday, and Max and I went out and started mowing, and we got sprinkled on a little bit on a few lawns, but we don't care. Sprinkles don't bother us. It's like sprinkles on ice cream. <laughs> and uh, we just kept mowing along, and then we got to one of our big commercials, and Max started mowing. I started trimming it out, and the skies, they opened up. What and did you do we, to piss off the landscaping gods? I don't know. The landscaping gods are not happy with us. So we got soaked, like soaked, soaked. So we said, all right, screw this. I have Max all week, so I wasn't really concerned. We'll get caught up. We always do. And uh, so it was only supposed to rain for an hour this morning, and that didn't happen. It literally rained all morning. It is now 11.55. We came back to the shop. Put Max put together the new fan, and... Uh, Somebody suggested to me in a video that the problem I'm having with that Skag V-Ride 1, that grinding, when you're going straight and you're cruising, you know, making a pass, it's completely smooth. But when you get to the end of a pass and you go to do your three-point turn, it starts grinding. When you back up, it grinds. When you start to go, it grinds. And then um, as you're going, it goes away, perfectly smooth. So somebody suggested that they had a problem with their V-Ride 1, um, and it turned out to be that the bolts that hold the wheel motor in had come loose. And somebody also suggested to me that Blake from B&B had the same issue with his V-Ride one. So we checked them and I turned them all, all four bolts on both wheel motors. Some of them I turned like half inch and some of them I turned like an inch. So almost a full rotation on some of them. But um, that was with a wrench on there and then another wrench on the end of that. Um, they weren't they weren't very loose so they're all pretty snug I just tightened them all right up but I also thought that the tensioner pulley for the hydro system um, wasn't that great so I changed that out because I had a spare one so I put that on um, I don't really know that any of that's gonna help so Fingers anyway crossed. yeah and we got a shop fan because we really needed one um, it doesn't get too hot inside the shop but on days when it is real hot it gets stuffy in there. So it's not super hot, but it's stuffy. So we got a 30 inch stand up ceiling fan, or not ceiling fan, a uh, shop fan from Harbor Freight the other day. And so Max put that together and that thing's pretty awesome. It pushes air all the way across that shop. Yeah, you just had to fabricate it to make it work the right way. Yeah, of course, because it was Harbor Freight. You take out my ribs and your ribs at the same time. Yeah, that, that kind of hurt. We kind of, we got a little injury on that. But anyway, so, it's now down to 11% chance of rain. The roads are drying up, and uh, it's 11% until about 4.45, then it goes to a 50% and shows another band coming through. So we threw on the Toro and the x because they do the best with wet grass, but that new Skag V-Ride 1 does pretty good with wet grass too, just not as good. So we're gonna go back out, and we're gonna try mowing again, and we're gonna see what happens, and see how much more we can get done. Even if we don't get it all done, at least we won't be as far behind starting tomorrow. Get the big ones done. Yeah, we're going to go try to get these real big ones done that we have. So, V-Ride 1, Toro and Grandstand, and let's go see what we can do.
So the rain let up and Max and I decided we were going to go out and uh, continue on with our list. And we got to where we had two monsters left and then a couple small ones. And Billy was getting off the bus, so we asked Billy if he wanted to go mow with us, and he did. And we finished them all, and the last one, it started to rain on us again. Thunder and lightning, and it is hammering down. I do not see a drought coming at all this year. Every time we think it's about to be a drought, it starts hammering down rain again. So I don't see a drought coming this year at all. What do you think, boys? We're going to have a pretty hefty mowing season this year? Yeah, you can keep me busy all summer. I'll keep you busy. We got a bunch of landscaping we keep putting off too because we can't keep up with the mowing. Well, we can, but it's taking everything we got. Billy! What? Billy, 16 years old, Billy! When are you going to go get your permit? There's a lot of people that wished you a happy wow. birthday in that mm -hmm. video yesterday. Huh? So there's a lot of people that wished you a happy birthday in that video yesterday. I didn't go to all the comments. Yeah, there was a lot of them. A lot, a lot of views on that video. People must like you or something. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Just a little maybe. bit. Just a little bit. He used to say the only reason people come to our channel and watch our videos is because he's there. Yeah, not your kid at all. Yeah, right? <laughs> they get sick of looking at my ugly mug. So anyway, it's a, it's a coming down. Coming down. See, what, what happened is it started raining. Yeah. Big old fat bubbly rain. But we are not behind. We got everything done. And tomorrow's another day. See that lady over there talking to me? No. What just happened? Just come out of that house, two houses over. Woo! She was madder than a red tail hornet, boy. She was mother effing me, screaming at me, swearing at me. For what? What'd I do? You didn't do nothing. She <laughs> says, two days ago while you were here mowing, you threw a rock out of that mower that pierced right through the siding on my house. And I had to have the insurance company come and they appraised it and a contractor come and they fixed it already. You can't see it, it's not there. They already fixed it. And I said, In two days? I said, Is that right? I said, Well, I said, I hate to break it to you, but uh, I wasn't here mowing two days ago. I mow here every Friday. I go in this house right here that I'm mowing is an old family friend and I only mow it for him when he goes out of town on vacation. So I don't even mow this lot every week. She goes, well it was last week. Last week when you were here mowing, flying around on that little buggy like a maniac. And I said, well, I'm not flying around like a maniac. And I said, but if I did throw a rock out of my mower and pierce your siding, I understand things happen. I said, and that's why I have insurance. I said, I would be happy to speak with your insurance company or to have my insurance company contact your insurance company. We can get it taken care of. And then that way you're not out your deductible or whatever the insurance is. I go, we take care of it. Well, I'm trying to tell this the whole time. She is mother effing me. She's like, well, there's rocks over there in his lawn because he's a scumbag mother effer. But she didn't say mother effer. And uh, she's like, and there's crap all over his yard, and he doesn't clean up anything. Go, oh, ma'am, that's not my problem, and that's not of my concern. Whatever he does with his property, I just cut it for him when he goes out of town, that's all. And uh, I said, I don't even weed back here, I just cut it for him. And she's like, well, this is ridiculous, and my husband, he's a veteran, he's a he's a Vietnam veteran, disabled veteran, and, uh, and you should have a little respect for your veterans. And I said, you see these tattoos, ma'am, and this anchor right here? I said, I'm a veteran. I understand. I said, and I didn't even know your husband was a veteran, so it wasn't like I was intentionally disrespecting him. I said, but like I said, get your insurance company in touch with mine or give me the information and I will have it taken care of and it won't cost you a thing and you'll get reimbursed for any damage I may have done. I understand. I said, all I need from you is something from your contract to your insurance company. You gotta have paperwork, you know, if it was fixed already and uh, just give me or make me a copy, give me a copy of that, I can give you my business card and give you my address and you can have it mailed to me and, and we'll get it taken care of. 
And she's like, my husband spends hours out here mowing our lawn. And our lawn's quarter the size of that lawn. And he spends hours out here mowing that lawn because he doesn't fly around like a maniac. And I said, I can't imagine why he would want to spend so long outside. <laughs> she stops. She looks at me. She goes, Mark. She, F you, mother effer. And I'm like, you have a nice day, ma'am. She goes, oh, and my neighbor does the same thing. Come over here and look at this. And I'm like, nope, I don't have time, ma'am. I said, the number's on the side of the truck. Feel free to give me a call. We can discuss this further. I can't even see your truck. I go, it's right around the corner. It's one with the big trailer attached to it. And she's like, whatever. Have some respect and walked away. She's so pleasant. <laughs> my favorite ones. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's talk about trimmer string. I don't ever really talk about this very much and it's because I never really film me trimming. I think that's boring. Although I do like to watch guys do an edging with their trimmers. Um, and I always do, I've mentioned before, I do the first edge of the season with my actual stick edger. And then after that, I pretty much maintain everything with a weed whacker. So I go through a lot of string, a lot of string. Um, I have a two and a half gallon can of premix, um, and I go through about two of them a week. Uh, that's usually, you know, a little bit in the backpack lowers, but I use the handheld more than anything, and I use the Milwaukee battery powered handheld, so most of that's all trimmer. So over the years, I've tried everything that's out there. I've tried the Echo line, the Ugly line, uh, you name it, everything Home Depot sells, Lowe's sells, <coughs> everything online I could find. I mean, I've just tried tons and tons and tons of them and the number one string hands down I've ever found is made by steel it's yellow stuff and uh, it, it's the best trimmer line steel's commercial trimmer line is like a green color as a matter of fact I think I have a roll of it let's look they call it their commercial line I think it's absolute garbage I don't there's nothing commercial about it yeah this is it right here so this green stuff it's commercial line three pound point nine five so that stuff's absolute garbage. But this year, I went with a roll of this. This is the Samurai Trimmer Line 0.95 from Green Touch. And I figured I'd give it a shot. Now, usually by this time, it's uh, June 15th today. Usually by this time in the season, I've gone through about one and a half of the five pound spools of the steel trimmer line, the stuff I says my favorite. This is a three pound spool. <coughs> this is a three pound spool of this Samurai line by Green Touch. And this has been on here since the beginning of the season. This is what I have left of it. It's almost gone, but this is one three pound spool and I've got through this far into the season. This is the, I put this on the first day of mowing and this is all I've been using ever since. And there's still that much left. I absolutely love this line, and as long as Green Touch keeps making it, I'm not switching to anything else. This will eat through anything I want. I can get through edging tons and tons of sidewalk with barely even bumping the trimmer. I mean, this stuff is just amazing. I love this stuff.
thing cuts nice cuts really nice actually um, just as good if not better than the v-ride 2 but ideally it's the same deck so I don't know we just have that grinding issue with the front um, with the front I say with the wheel motor and uh, I'm pretty positive it's on the right hand side while you're standing on the mower looking down it's the right hand side wheel motor um, I don't really know what else to do uh, a lot of people have given suggestions that um, the wheel motor could have come loose. I checked on both sides. The bolts turned like a half turn, if that. Um, that wasn't the issue. We replaced the pulley for the hydro drive. Um, we thought that bearing was a little messed up. Come to find out it really wasn't that bad, but I did have a brand new one, so I put that on. We put a brand new hydro drive belt on. We flushed the hydro system. Uh, like I said, the uh, fluid that came out was black. Hydro fluid should never get black. It's not like engine oil. Uh, it was pretty nasty. Um, the guy I got it from keeps sending me messages saying, you know, I don't know what the deal is. You know, there was never an issue with that, this and that. He said it never did anything like that. Never hesitated, never nothing. And then today he's texting me, telling me he had hesitation going up hills. So he's changed the story a couple times, but... I don't know. He says at one time he said he put 300 hours on that machine and it made him 60 grand in 300 hours. I don't know. He, he said uh, I had like three or four or five brand new cup or uh, tiger cubs and never had that issue and this and that. I don't know. Personally, I think he knew there was something wrong with it. He just didn't know what. Um, I don't blame him to the sense where I, I would say that he knew. Uh, it had a bad wheel motor on it. I definitely don't think it's a hydro unit. I think it's a wheel motor. Um, I don't think to the point where he knew that's what it was, but he knew something was wrong with it, for sure. I just don't think that maybe he had the mechanical aptitude to know what it was. Um, I changed out all the basic little stuff just because I had spare parts. So I figured why not change them first? Uh, this has happened to me with a few different mowers over the years, and it's always either been, um, there's air in the system, or the belt is slipping or pulley. And I've tried all them and it's still there. So, I mean, it, it cruises right along fine, but when you take off, it grinds. And then as you're going, it's completely smooth. When you get to the end of the pass and you turn, it grinds. When you back up, it grinds. When you start to go, it grinds. And then as you're going, it smooths right out again. So, I don't know. Maybe you guys know. Um, I would definitely say that wheel motor is, is going. And uh, I don't know. I can get a wheel motor for 436 bucks online. I was thinking about just buying two of them and uh, just swapping them both out. Because once one goes, the other one is only not far behind it. Same thing with hydro motors. Um, that's always been my experience. So unless any of you guys have had this issue before and you might know what it could be. And it's something that I haven't mentioned. Please let me know. Okay, so today is Wednesday and we did not film any mowing today. We got all of our mowing done, no problem. We were just hauling butt all day and we knocked it out. We did just do, we did just film our comparison video from the V-Ride 1 to the V-Ride 2. That will be a separate video in itself. 
but uh so yesterday when we got back from mowing um this was perfectly fine we were one of the last lawns and we pulled this mower off because i don't remember what was behind it no this was behind the skag we wanted to run the skag yesterday oh yeah so we pulled this off to get the skag off and then we pulled this one back on we mowed and put the skag back on we get back here to the shop and this one wouldn't do anything we turned the key and it wouldn't do anything the hour meter is out not even showing anything on it um no hours no nothing which even with the key off it should show the hours it's that's how the grandstand is it's the same way um but it wouldn't show anything we thought the battery was dead we put a jump pack on it and uh turns out the battery is not dead at all um not that the power chute draws anything but power chute works perfectly fine um so I thought maybe something with the ignition. I went to pull the plug off the back of the ignition and the ignition literally fell apart in pieces. So I did order a new ignition. Um, that'll be in tomorrow. I'm hoping I put that on and that fixes the problem. But if not, then we need to start looking at other things. It's got to be a safety switch, an electrical switch, something somewhere. It really shouldn't be any safety switches because I have them all bypassed. Um, you guys can give me shit later. I really don't care, but you guys, any of you guys have been following me forever know I do that with all my machines. Um, they're bypassed and it's pretty much just like the parking brake and the platform. Um, platform. But this one doesn't have a platform safety. It has one right in here. Um, it's right under there. So if you let go of it, it shuts the machine down. Um, but other than that, uh, I, I don't know. There could be these uh, EFI engines. It shouldn't even have much to do with the engine at all. We're getting no power even to the hour meter. So there's definitely something going on in there. Um, I don't know if the hour meter took a crap and that's cutting out power to the ignition itself. Or if it's just the ignition that took a crap and that's cutting out power to the hour meter. Whatever the case may be. But this machine is down. So, But it's alright because we have the V-Ride 1. The V-Ride 2, the right 32, and the Toro Grandstand. So Grandstand's a 52, that's a 52, that's a 52, that's a 52. And if it really came down to it, I could take the walker that I have at home, pull the 48 collection deck off, and throw the 56 inch side discharge deck I have right on that. So yet another backup. So that's where we stand today. We will film something tomorrow, so we have some kind of mowing footage to throw in this video and film for you guys, but that's where we stand right now. And uh, we do have a mower down, but we have backups, so it doesn't stop us and we keep on going. Yeah, even if we didn't have backups, we'd make it work. We always make it work. So tomorrow's another day. Now it's time to go to the gym. <laughs> oh yeah. Cucumber, lime, Gatorade. This stuff is the bomb. It's insanely refreshing, but I highly suggest you only drink it cold because it's nasty it's when it's warm. The old man stands right up, stares over at us. I wave to him. Put his head back down. Bitter old man. You're outside, man. You're outside. You're chilling. You're not stuck inside with the wife. What are you complaining about? Why are you so miserable? Maybe he knows he's almost done. He's got to yeah. go back in. So it is Thursday and I didn't film very much today at all. Um, but we did have a mishap today. A mishap with the V-Ride 2. More so with the power chute. <laughs> so let's get back to the shop and we'll be back with you guys. And we will cover it. It's just been one of those weeks. We need two wheel motors on the V-Ride 1, which they should be here by Monday. I'm hoping they show up sooner than that. But they should be here by Monday. Um, we had a motor fry on us on the Toro Grandstand power chute. That motor died, but we have spares. So we just swapped it out, quick like three minute fix, and it was done. Um, and the X part went down this week. The X mark went down. We haven't figured that out yet. The new ignition is actually supposed to be in today. So they're calling for rain all day tomorrow. Who knows if we'll actually get it, but if we do, then I'll get to screw around with that tomorrow. That might fix the problem. Who knows? But then today, we have a power shoot issue on the B-Ride 2. So let's get back to the shop and uh, I'll show you.
show you guys exactly what we're talking about on that. So, here's the deal with the power chute. Some power chutes, like, can I drop this down without hitting that blower? Sure I can. Okay, it's just a flat plate and it bolts right to the side there, like that bolt right there. I've showed if any of you guys have watched my videos on how to install these, that's how a lot of them install. And then there's other ones like this style where it's kind of a bracket that comes up and in there is a spacer well supposed to be supposed to be a spacer and the bolt comes up through and the spacer holds pressure to hold it up Let's see if i can show you this side like that you see that so there's a spacer in there and the bolt comes up through it and that's what holds it on the issue is when i first got this i saw these um they're like torque nuts and they're supposed to dig in but i've never trusted these in the past i've had nothing but problems with these over the years on different applications i was going to take that off and put a lock nut on there with like nylon lock nut i've never had one of them fail and i didn't do it but i've never had an issue i have this style i think I think it's, a, yeah, it's the same style down there on the 32, and I think it's the same style, it was the same style on something else. Oh, the uh, the Skag 36 walk behind was the same style. Um, but I, of course, have run into an issue. So, um, anyway, I seen Max Moen, and I seen this thing moving uh, up and down, and I stopped him, and I looked at it. And notice that that was gone so at some point that disappeared but I do have a long stick of this tubing so I will just take that one off and I'll measure how long it's supposed to be and I'll cut a new one and then I'll get some longer bolts to come up through so I have more meat to grab onto and I'll put lock nuts on both of them problem solved <clears throat> okay problem solved so what I end up doing was I cut those pieces of tube and see the ones in there and I cut to the same height the original one was which is right there and then I got bigger bolts um, it had these small bolts in it and I ran 3 8 bolts but longer bolts there's more meat to grab onto with lock nuts and I cranked them right in there so that they are uh they're good to go. What I end up using for bolts was when I changed out these caster wheels um, on one of the mower decks, I kept all the old hardware. So those bolts turned out to be perfect for that. So, problem solved. Well, it's Friday morning and the question of the day is, are we getting wet? Are we getting wet? How are we getting wet today? So Wednesday they were saying it was supposed to rain all day Friday. Or no, they were saying it was supposed to start raining about 5 o'clock Friday evening and then rain all night and then pretty much on and off rain all weekend. And then yesterday they said it was going to rain all day today. And this morning I woke up and it said not a washout by any means and it's supposed to rain like hit or miss a couple of sprinkle showers this and that so it looks dark like it looks like it's gonna freaking rain 
Um, looks a little bit lighter in the direction we have to go, but they said uh, it started to sprinkle on my way to the shop, and then the ground was all wet and it dried up already. It's, it's nice and windy out, so that's definitely going to help, but we're going to go and see what we can do. I got a lot of plans for later this afternoon. I don't know about plans, we'll call them obligations. <laughs> I got obligations for this afternoon. It is prom. And no, right I am not prom. going to prom. But I do have to be at Fort Niagara State Park at 4.30 for Jersey to get pictures done. I'm supposed to be there for that. Um, her and her group of friends are getting pictures done. And I think at like 2.30 or 3 o'clock, I'm supposed to pick her up from the hair place that's right over next to the shop and drive her back home. I'm not completely obligated to do that. I'm like the backup for that. Um, so I don't really know if that's something that I have to do then, but then later this evening I'm supposed to go, I think we're supposed to go and pick her up from the dance and then take them to the one person's house where they're having a party or whatever and uh, I don't know, I think maybe Sabrina's doing that. I don't freaking know. But anyway, we got stuff to do. We got to knock this day out and get this mowing done, which shouldn't be any problem because it's the first Friday in weeks we haven't had any stragglers from like Thursday or anything like that. So yeah. um, it should just be straight Friday mowing and knock it out. And uh, so we're rolling with the right because we have one lawn we have to use that on, one tiny little lawn. It's on Friday mornings. But then we got the grandstand and the V-Ride 2. Still waiting for the wheel motors to come in on the V-Ride 1. And my ignition was supposed to show up for the X-Mark yesterday. Um, because I believe that is the problem with why there's no power. Because all the wiring harness and everything runs through that ignition. So I believe that that's the issue. I'm not positive with why the X-Mark is down. But it didn't show up last night. And it kept getting alerts from Amazon Prime saying it was running late. It would be there. It would be there. Then my wife was like, right down the road, Amazon driver got whacked by a car today. Like, four or five o'clock yesterday afternoon apparently he got out of the truck and ran out in front of a car and he got hit which sucks so I guess my ignition really isn't all that important when it comes to something like that I hope the guy's okay but guy girl I don't know but the Amazon driver so yeah we gotta be politically correct yeah yeah can't uh, call them a delivery guy it's a delivery person yeah it's hey I don't even know their gender I, <laughs> I can't say cool ranch that. Dorito that's what that yeah they're, they're <laughs> Cool Ranch Dorito. But anyway, so I guess maybe that's supposed to show up today. So we'll find out if that fixes the X mark. But either way, let's, uh, let's go get this mowing knocked out. Yeah, the I school mean, bus gets out of our way. We got stuff to, we got places to go. Got lawns to mow, come on.
rain. Hey, we cut between the raindrops. Hey, look at this spot between the <laughs> Got some nice pattern on the ground here. Yeah, we do. Something like that. Come on. See, we can crash even off wet dry holes, you know, because we're not at our amateurs. We take care of this when we're out here. It's not always so easy backing this thing here. That's a thin laneway to back up in. And the ramp is wet because, well, everything's wet. <laughs> but I figured I'd throw the camera up there anyway. Somebody asked me, how hard is it to back into that shop? Some days, it just takes everything I got. Other days, whoop, right up in, no problem. But yeah, we got a couple bicycle projects we're working on. So, anyway, everything is all wet. Got a nice little bath in the way back, not really. Uh, but it is all wet. So Max and I decided we only have, how many we got left tomorrow? Like six or seven. We have like six or seven. I think there's one, one, two, three, four. We have four that are good size. And then we figure we got the two back to back on the river. We have the one on East Avenue. That's that's freaking good size. And that always takes a double cut because she fertilizes so much and it grows so thick. And then... That big one on Cane. Oh yeah, that big one on Cane. And then we got my mom's. The one on Blairville. The silo. Victor Eight. Victor Eight. So eight. So we have eight left. So it's really no big deal. We don't have nothing really going on this weekend. Um, nothing that prevents us or makes us rush for mowing tomorrow. And we have Billy tomorrow if he wants to mow with us. But oh, let's be honest, he always wants to mow. Yeah. So it's not like we need to rush. So I guess what we're gonna do is just screw around here, and uh, we got stuff we can do here. We're trying to get this shop cleaned up. It's a freaking mess. And uh, I got this video to edit. So that's gonna close out the week for us. Um, I did put that, if you guys didn't catch it, I put that pop-up video in the middle of the week uh, comparing the two V-Rides back-to-back. -back. Uh, there will be some more pop-up videos coming on. Um, 
I will do one, uh, I don't know if I'll do one installing the power chute on the V-Ride 1 because I've done like 10 videos installing them on different mowers. If you guys haven't figured it out by now, then uh, I suggest you probably just pay someone to do it. So uh, <laughs> it literally takes me like 20 minutes to install one because I've done so many, but that should be in any time now for the V-Ride 1. Um, the wheel motor should be in Monday at the latest. I'm hoping maybe they'd come in today or tomorrow. It definitely won't be today. Maybe tomorrow or something. We get it done before Monday. But I will do a video on that because a bunch of you guys have asked um, to show a video on how to change them. They're really easy. It's just the longest part is flushing out the hydro system and, or bleeding it out and getting all the air out of the system. So um, that's really, I'm mean, changing them out. It's nothing. It's a couple fittings on the lines and four bolts to hold each one in and you're done. So... Other than that, taking the wheel off and the wheel spacer kit off, I mean, that's super simple stuff. So, and on this machine, they're pretty exposed, so there's nothing hard to work around. Um, but that's pretty much it for that. And uh, what else we got going on? Nothing until we get our parts in for the trimmer and... Oh yeah, we're still waiting on the trimmer head. That, was, that one came in, ended up being the wrong one. The head for that FS111. So we're waiting for the new one, the correct one to come in. We're waiting for the correct air cover to come in for the right stander. Um, we're waiting for the ignition to come in for the X mark. I'm hoping that'll be here today. Uh, that's pretty much it. So we're we're rolling. We're knocking them out. We're getting at it. And next week's another week. But uh, that'll close it out for this week. Did I forget anything? No, I don't think so. I think we're uh, on a good note right now. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that outside. We're doing all right. Did it stop raining? Oh no, it's coming down, I can see it. <laughs> it's one of the things that's like faint, but you can still see it. All right, that's it, we're out of here. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for watching as always, and we will see you guys next week.